Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to go over frequency separation in Affinity Photo for iPad. Now this is a pretty nifty little filter that Affinity have added into the iPad as well as the desktop version um, that you will not find in Photoshop because you'll have to do it all manually. Um, I'm just going to come in and I'm going to duplicate this image. It's always good to duplicate your background layer so you've always got the original at hand if needed. Perfect sense. So I'm going to make sure the top one is selected before going into my filters and scrolling down to frequency separation. It's all in alphabetical order, so it's easy to find. So you'll see my image has been split into two. One side's a high frequency with all the detail. One side is the low frequency, which keeps all of the tones. You can see just clicking and dragging on the image. It is, you know, scrolling through the radius here. You can click on the radius button at the bottom and drag it. The numbers you choose depends on you know, what you want from the image, but you can keep it quite low and get good results. I tend to like no detail in the low frequency, just tones and keep all my detail in the high. Once you've hit OK and applied that, it will turn your top layer into two separate ones, one low, one high. So it keeps it all separate for you to work on them individually if needed. I'm just going to grab the healing tool here and on the low frequency layer, I'm just going to go around all the blemishes that I can see, click and drag to replace the pixels with all that information I am dragging it in. Just clicking and dragging, lots of repetitiveness. I'm not going to do all the blemishes. This is something I tend to do before. I start working on the skin. Normally I wouldn't use frequency separation and um, I'd be cleaning up the skin and dodging and burn, burning but for the purpose of this this is a pretty cool little filter. You will notice though when you're on the low frequency things with very fine detail like that bit of hair you can see will not be moved. You will have to go on your high frequency to remove it. So there's double the work there. So that's another reason why to do your skin cleaning before you use this filter. But I did want to show you you can clean on your low frequency layer using this. So, you know, springs and roundabouts. If you don't have much cleaning up to do, this could be the option for you. I've just created a new pixel layer, just in the layer studio between the low frequency and the high frequency. Making sure my paintbrush tool is selected. I've clicked on the color at the bottom my color wheel has appeared and I'm using the little eyedropper tool, clicking and dragging to the point I want to take the color from. And I'm just going to gently brush with a bro well, a soft brush with a really low opacity and a really high flow. And I'm just going to draw over the areas to smooth out the tones. I'm not smoothing out the skin because the high frequency contains all of that detail. I'm just smoothing out the tones below it so the tones flow more harmoniously together. I'm trying my hardest not to go over the highlights because if you go over the highlights it can make your image look very dull and highlights and shadows are necessary within your image you know because it shows off the lighting skills of the photographer. <laughs> um, you know it, it's just those things that you do tend to keep into an image. And if by removing them, you'll make it look quite flat. So I'm just going to kind of work around this image, just smoothing out these tones behind. It's easier to think of tones in grayscale because colour can confuse people quite a bit. Um, you know, just think of these graduation in colour going from dark to light. And all these wonderful colours in between. <laughs> I'm just trying to get the fingers a similar sort of tone to the face. It's still a little bit too bright, but hey, we're working on it. Again, I'm just going to choose little bits of colour. If I was doing this for an actual job, I would spend a bit more time on this. But this is just to show you how this technique works and what you can achieve with it. Like I said, I do prefer cleaning up the skin and using dodge and burn for getting those tones all nice and smooth. Um, 
but I am pretty impressed with this filter. I have been known to use this for photo manipulations. For high-end beauty retouching, no chance. <laughs> you know, you can tell when things have been run through a filter, when you've been doing it for so long anyway. Um, it does give a nice kind of look um, when used right for portraiture. And for photo manipulation, it does save a bit of time. But if I go in for beauty, it, it's got to be judging and burning. I'm just using the eraser tool just to clean up some of the area around the eye because I went in with the paintbrush and done a bit too much work and I was losing a bit of the shape. Alternatively, I could have created a mask to erase some of these parts. But like I said before, this is just showing you the frequency separation. So erase will work fine. Again, I'm just coming in and choosing one of the colours I want to blend. And just getting that graduation. I'm trying not to take it all the way at the end because I do want some of that shadow creeping in because it does add depth to the face. This is very much like makeup artistry or illustration. Like all the fundamental skills you will learn from any of these will all help with retouching because the face has so much depth. It, it is all made up of basic shapes, textures, you know. All these things help. Although I wish my retouching skills would actually help me with makeup because I am rubbish. I may as well just draw my face with crayons. So I've come in and done a little bit more work around the eyebrow there. Although I am losing a bit of the depth, it is straight. It is quite a strange angle that I've shot from here. Um, but there's just some reason why I love it. I don't know why. The model is from from Savalis Models, who's worked on some pretty huge campaigns actually, and the makeup artist is Chantal, who is currently living in California, living the dream. So jealous. But yeah, there's just something about this shot that I love, even though it's a strange angle. I'm just still working on that little pixel layer. I'm not touching the low or the high at this point. And it's pretty good because I can switch that pixel layer on and off. I could change the opacity of it, make it lighter. If I were using a harder brush for any reason, like say I forgot to change which brush I was using. I tend to use quite soft brushes. If I was using a harder brush and you could see those harsh lines where the brush is overlapping another one of your marks, you could easily just come in and use a blur on this pixel layer and it will give you a similar sort of effect. So don't be too worried if you're heavy handed when you're doing this because there are workarounds for it. So I'm just working a bit more into some of those little areas. And the overall tone is looking quite nice, even though I have lost some of the depth. Just fixing these fingers here. A bit more of a graduation there. It's best to work with the planes of the face and the shadow and highlights. Don't go too much into it. I went too much into the lips there. I'm just going to undo by clicking the little arrows in the bottom right hand corner and I'm going to try and keep that depth. I'm just making the image flow a bit nicer. Undo. So I'm zooming in and while I'm still working on this you can see how much detail has been retained in this. A lot of the time when you see people using the frequency separation every bit of information is gone. I like it to look quite natural if I'm going to be using this, but because I haven't touched the high frequency layer, all that detail has been retained. So there's some close-ups of it. I would have liked to have spent more time on it, but it would bore you all. So this is the final output, which is quite nice for a portrait. So I hope you like this video. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you all next time.